someone needs to start a YouTube channel called First Kings 18 Apologetics. <laughs> so this is how you evangelize to a naturalist. You get some wood, paper towel, and you put it in the Pyrex. This is biblical. I am not mocking here. This is straight out of 1 Kings 18. I'm going to take a second one. Put it in there. Since Elijah did it three times with the water, I'm going to do it three times as well, and also three sheets. There is precedent. There is precedent for this in the Bible. I'm not doing any mocking. I'm not being, I'm not being disrespectful whatsoever. All I'm doing is recreating the Elijah narrative of 1 Kings 18. And remember, as I read earlier, everyone there in 1 Kings 18 thought that this was a good idea. So I hope any Christians watching, any Jews watching, any Muslims watching can agree. Oh, did you hear that? It's a snap. This is pure water. And just to show that's pure water, I'm going to drink some. Okay. So what Elijah did is he wet, he wetted down, <laughs> wetted? He wetted down the wood thrice, three times. So we're going to do this. Oh, I only have two bottles. Okay. Well, that, we'll come, say that's one. <laughs> Sorry. Two, and then let me open up. Okay, listen to prove that this is pure water. There's no trickery. Listen, listen. A little snap there. The seal's broken. That's proof one that this is pure water. Proof two. Kirkland. I love Costco. My my dream job is to work as a greeter at Costco. Okay, this is the third time. Pyrex, because fire from heaven's hot, so we gotta make sure we use Pyrex. This is the best apologetic in the world. This is not mocking. This is not being disrespectful. This is recreating 1 Kings 18. Now, uh, I wanna be true to the word of God, so let me see here. What exactly did Elijah say? Okay, so I'm gonna hold this up. This represents the altar with the, there's no meat on here. This represents the bull and the altar. And uh, Elijah then said, show these people, show these naturalists that it was you who commanded me to do these things. Jesus, answer my prayer. Show these naturalists that you are God. Show these ex-Christians that you are real and that they might be brought back to you. Let's wait a little bit. Elijah gave Baal, the, the followers of Baal, like six hours, but let's give a little time. And if this lights on fire, I think that's the best apologetic in the world. And if this lights on fire now, the, and burns up the paper towel. I am dead serious. My confidence in Christianity is going to go sky high. Now, <clears throat> this is the best apologetic to convert a naturalist, especially if every time it's tried, it works. Now, some people might say, well, Doug, that could be any God doing it. How do we know? It's okay, this is how we do that. This is how we fix that problem. In the name of Vishnu, Light this paper towel on fire. Nothing. In the name of Ganesh, light this paper towel on fire. What are you sleeping, Ganesh? Are you busy, Ganesh? In the name of Allah, I ask Allah if you're real, light this paper towel on fire. Are you busy, Allah? Are you sleeping, Allah? I'm using the words of Elijah here, so I'm not mocking. Elijah said this about Baal. I'm saying this about Allah right now because it's not lighting on fire. This is the best apologetic in the world.
in the name of Yahweh. I, uh, not Jesus, I'm separating. This, in the name of Judaism, Yahweh, light this paper towel on fire. Show that you're real. Are you sleeping, Yahweh? Are you busy, Yahweh? These are the words of Elijah. Finally, in the name of Jesus, the Christian God, light this paper towel on fire. Are you busy, Jesus? Are you sleeping, Jesus? I'm asking, I'm begging, I'm pleading with Christians and apologists listening right now to please don't view this as mocking because I have just recreated recreated 1 Kings 18. That's all I did, and I, all I did was what Elijah did without the meat. If it was a choice between the 1 Kings 18 apologetic to convert, help lead your non-believing loved one to Jesus, if it's a choice between this, which always will light on fire when you ask for in the name of Jesus, or the cosmological argument, or the contingency argument, or the theological argument, or the moral argument, which would you use? The prime mover argument. Christians, be honest with me. If you had the choice between this apologetic this being lit on fire, or using five, uh, Edward Fazer's five proofs for God, which would you use? Basically, the Aristotelian argument starts from the fact that change occurs, right? So, you know, the, the water in the cup here started out being really cold when it came from the fridge, and now it's kind of lukewarm, right? That would be an example of change, or I move my hand through space, and so that's an example of change. Aristotle argues that on analysis, change always involves the actualization of a potential, something going from potential to actual. My hand's potentially over there, now it's actually over there. Water's potentially lukewarm, then it becomes actually lukewarm. And he develops this idea in response to a couple uh, ancient Greek philosophers named Parmenides and Zeno, who deny that change was possible. So he presents this argument of what change is as a way to answer them. But it also forms the starting point of his argument for, for God, for what he calls an unmoved mover, the prime unmoved mover of the world. Because the idea is that, well, if change involves going from potential to actual, we have to ask, how does that ever happen? And his answer is that something can go from potential to actual, only if there's already Now, listen to this. Happens, this so is, My hand's actually I think even if you're a Christian left, listening, and for that, for actually to become to the left, right? there has to be something already actual that makes that happen. You think your loved one will convert from this? So Aristotle proceeds to the conclusion that, well, Whenever something goes to potential to actual, there's always something already actual that makes that happen. And if that already actual thing goes to potential to actual, there's something already actual making that happen. So we've got one thing being changed by another being changed by another, or one thing being actualized by another being actualized by another, and so forth. And, crucial step in this argument, the most You seriously think philosophical arguments is going to lead someone to Christ? That extend not backward in time to the past, but this, downward here and now, you might say. So my hand moves here and now. This will. The motor neurons are firing here and now. The presupposition list starts with God's revelation in Christ. The triune God who lives has revealed himself in Scripture. And that is their starting point. And they reason from revelation rather than to revelation. And so what the presuppositionist likes to do is he likes to really offer internal criticisms of other worldviews, showing that they are false or self-defeating or lack the preconditions for intelligibility in some way, whereas the Christian revelation gives us the preconditions. Christians, be honest. The preconditions for revelation and so forth. And so Listen. Wants to do is he wants to draw a Presuppositional apologetics or First Kings 18 apologetics. And then hypothetically, let's Think about your loved one who's not a believer. If it's an unbelieving circle, it fails to explain the world in some way. And the presupposition feels he can do that not only with broad worldviews like atheism and pantheism, but even things closer to home like Mormonism or um, Islam. I think the strength of presuppositionalism is, um, first of all, it really does give a lot of Christians a lot of confidence in the scriptures as the revealed word of God. It gives Christians a lot of confidence in the wor revealed word of God. I tell you what, that is baloney. I'll stand by that. When compared to this, I dare a Christian listening to say that if this would light in the name of Jesus right now and happened every time it's tried, that would give you way more confidence in Christianity than anything this guy has to say. Well, I think the first thing we would do is we would look at some facts that would be so strongly evident that they would, uh, they have convinced nearly every single scholar who studied this, this subject to regard them as historical facts, including skeptical ones. That would be things such as Jesus' death by crucifixion, that subsequent to his death, that Jesus' disciples had experiences that they interpreted uh, as... Jesus Christians, be honest. Listen to Mike Lacona here. And in group settings. And third, talking about the minimal facts, of the named Paul, who can think of your loved one who's not a believer and ask which apologetic is better. Now, this would be like a modern minimal facts Laden, who has an experience and then convert from Islam to Christianity to or First Kings 18. I, am not, I have not mocked once about what I'm doing here. I have recreated First Kings 18, and I'm simply doing a version of what Elijah did. There's precedent for it. 
Elijah did it for the sole purpose to bring people back to God or bring people to God. And for Elijah, the best way was drenching wood, meat, an altar with water and calling on God to light it up on fire. And if anyone is doing the mocking here, it's Elijah, not me. Someone needs to start a YouTube channel called First Kings 18 Apologetics. 